What if I tell you that Google, yes, none other than Google is offering fellowships for PhD in different subjects. The call is currently open and if you are looking for an admission for PhD, then this is something you should definitely apply. And the best part of this is that you can apply from any of the institutes or universities in India. Okay, it's this particular fellowship is open globally. This video would focus more on Indian subcontinent. If you are watching from other countries also, do watch this because some of the components are common. The deadline for this is May 8th. In today's video, I am going to tell you about which are the different regions globally that come under this Google PhD fellowship. It means from where exactly you can apply, what would be the stipend exactly, how much will you get per month. Also, which are the different subjects? Like when you you say Google or something of this kind of thing comes up then the first thing that comes to your mind which came to my mind also of course was that Google may offer fellowships to say suppose computer or engineer related or software related but that is not true there are so many subjects where Google is offering fellowships what would be the eligibility criteria are there any specific conditions that you need to meet and there are few criteria which you should not have if you have that then you are not eligible so which are those what are the different documents that are required exactly how do you apply which website you should go to and what would be the selection process there are few criteria based on which the selection would be done research proposal is definitely one of that but apart from that also there are few criteria and i'm going to discuss all that in detail in today's video so without further ado let's begin these are all the regions which are covered now which other countries under this specifically you will get all the details on the website i'm leaving the links in the description box as well india is one of the country which is eligible for this even the eligibility conditions are pretty straightforward for our country we will see all of that in detail in some time what would be the stipend this differs from region to region for our country it is divided into two parts first one is for early stage phd students that means if you are thinking of taking admission to PhD or you have just taken admission for PhD within one year I'm saying then you are eligible for this particular fellowship so under this you will get up to US 50k $50,000 for your stipend for your research including your overseas travel and also you will get a Google mentor under this the duration for this would be four years the next one is the late stage PhD scholarship so the duration for this would be one year and you will given a total sum of $10,000 for all your research, for your overseas travel. If you wish to participate in any conference, then you will be given funding for that. And also you will be given Google Research Mentor. Somebody from Google would be there to assist you with your research. Now one thing over here to note is that it is not that you will be doing PhD in Google. You may be from any institute or university in India and you can apply for this. This is the best part. Now initially when I was researching for this fellowship now, I actually thought that Google scholarship would be specifically for softwares, computers, engineering. But there are 13 different subjects and health and bioscience is one of that that was quite surprising to me so these are all the subjects where if you are doing phd in this you can apply for this particular fellowship moving on to the eligibility condition first of all it should be full-time your phd where you have taken admission wherever in our country it should be full-time part-time is not eligible also if you are an employee of a google organization if you are working in google or any of your family members are working in Google then you are not eligible for this particular scholarship. Applications as I've said are open to all universities or institutes in India. If you are already receiving some other award say suppose you are receiving Inspire Fellowship or NetJR if you have cleared and you have activated the fellowship because just clearing net is not sufficient you have to actually activate the fellowship link it with your bank account and then the money comes to your account. 
if you have activated that then you are not eligible for this particular fellowship also if you are a past awardee if you have received google fellowship for any other purpose then you are not eligible for this one thing that you need to note over here is just because you apply to this fellowship does not mean you are going to get it you have to also separately apply to phd admission in whichever institute or university of your choice so two things will happen simultaneously you applying to your phd in a particular institute or university and you applying for this fellowship which are the documents which are required for you to apply for this now there are several things whenever you apply for phd your phd proposal is definitely one of the first which is required and you need all these documents in a single flat pdf file don't make separate files you make a single file which has all the documents one by one your resume or your cv it should be one page also you need the cv of your mentor so wherever you will be doing phd you will have a supervisor right so you will need their resume as well you need a transcript coming to your research proposal the maximum length your research proposal could go over here in case of indian eligibility conditions is 3 pages and you also need references along with that there are few criteria when it comes to research proposal how will you write a research proposal for a fellowship as prestigious as google so let's move to the screen so we'll discuss some criteria and hopefully you will get an idea of how you are supposed to craft your proposal so it should clearly specify a problem okay it's not that something will come to your head and you are going to translate it into a phd topic it should be specific credible relevant outcome what will likely come to be that might otherwise not happen it should also differentiate the proposed contribution from prior work please apply normal practices tell us how research challenges would be addressed so if you are going ahead with this proposal you are definitely going to have some problems in between you have to anticipate that means predict what kind of problem might occur and how you intend to solve that also the proposal should show promise that it will benefit society or advance desired societal outcomes so this is something that most proposals nowadays ask some benefit to society should be there only you can tell it through literature review and what kind of work that has been going on apart from these documents you also require two to three letters of recommendation if you can get three then nothing better than that otherwise you can go in for two one of them should be from your phd supervisor now where exactly you are going to apply which website so i'm giving the link in the description box as i've said already in the intro you have to register you have to sign up for it and then you will apply fill the form properly all the documents that i've mentioned you keep it ready in one file first before you even start with the registration process otherwise things will get messy at the end and then there are server problem then uploading issue is there best is you make a list of all the documents that i've said it is available on the website itself keep everything ready in soft copy so while you are filling up the form there is not much of an issue and the document that will differentiate your selection process or will facilitate i should say your selection process is the research proposal this should be bang on as per the specificity and the criteria that have been laid on you start writing research proposal first and then rest of the documents can be easily managed how your selection would happen and what are the different criteria that will be taken into consideration for finalizing your application for this first as i've already mentioned your research proposal whether it adheres to different criterias which have been laid down that is noted also research impact so if you have publication then that would be an add on it is not mandatory but that would be an add on also whether your proposal has a lot of societal benefit it is geared towards enhancement of society that also would be mentioned also one good news is that if you are eligible for this particular fellowship Google fellowship then Google does not just offer fellowships for PhD it offers fellowships to different other courses as well it's available on their main 
website if you want to see so it's available over there and you definitely should check out if you are eligible for google fellowships then you automatically become eligible for those fellowships as well so this is one of the real benefits if you qualify for this particular one you will be informed about the results by july 31st if you have any further queries then you can definitely mail over here now one thing to note over here is this email is country specific so different countries have different email address where you can contact if you are having any difficulty this email address is specifically for applicants from india if you are watching this from some other country then your email address will be different and it is available on the website i wish you all the best if you are taking admission for a phd then nothing like this that will take your career to the next level if you have any further questions or doubts you will comment down below and i'll be more than happy to reply to you till the next time bye